Let's talk about the benefits of using salt for your immune system. There's a certain chemical right here. It's called hypochlorite. That is a chemical name for bleach. I'm not sure you realize this, but two of your immune cells actually make bleach to kill microbes, the neutrophils and the macrophages. And both of these are phagocytes. And what does that mean? It means that these cells actually eat bacteria and viruses and fungus and mold and candida. So when they eat the microbe, they pull it in, they encapsulate the microbe, and they pour in chemicals. One of the chemicals they pour in is bleach. And guess how your body makes bleach? From chloride, as in sodium chloride. So it comes from salt. So if you don't have enough salt in your body, this mechanism or weapon used by these two cells uh, becomes severely compromised. So your defense mechanism is diminished. So hypochlorite bleach is a broad spectrum microbicide, which basically poisons the microbe. It'll kill bacteria within milliseconds. And it's much, much stronger than another chemical that these guys use called hydrogen peroxide. And as a side note, if these immune cells run into the unfriendly form of candida, they'll start dumping a lot of hypochlorite into the system to kill the candida. And certain reports indicate that it'll uh, release between 70 and 80% of the chloride reserve so they can actually make more hypochlorite. And what's interesting, when I was in practice, I noticed that certain people that came in that had a candida infection or an overgrowth of candida also had a very uh, pungent uh, smell about them, which basically was similar to bleach. And that was probably the immune system trying to wipe out the candida. And as a side note, if you have candida, the most important thing to do is not to consume bleach, but to consume salt to actually help your body make more bleach, as well as bring your carbs way down to zero because candida lives on sugars and glucose. So now let's talk about what would cause a deficiency in salt. Of course, the obvious thing is not consuming enough salt. You need about one to one and a half teaspoons, okay, level teaspoons of salt per day if you're not exercising. If you're sweating a lot and you're sweating out electrolytes, specifically sodium or chloride, you need more salt. Now, when you do the ketogenic diet, you need more sodium to prevent something called keto flu. Now, when you're deficient in sodium, you can have a lot of the symptoms that mimic the flu without being the flu. There's no infection involved, but a deficiency of sodium will cause muscle weakness, muscle achiness, headaches, lethargy, dizziness, not necessarily mucus, but a lot of the other symptoms. And when you actually go from burning sugar to burning fat and producing ketones, you're gonna lose a lot of the fluid retention, and with that, you lose a lot of sodium. Now, with the immune system, you need the other half of sodium. You need the chlorides. I think the chlorides are pretty much not really emphasized very much. We always talk about sodium, but I think this is a very ignored mineral. Chloride is also needed to make hydrochloric acid to also kill off pathogens that can come into your stomach. But it's definitely needed for the immune system to build up the phagocytes. Another way that you can become deficient in salt is, is having diarrhea, vomiting, taking diuretics, consuming a lot of potassium without salt. I mean, even if you were to consume uh, 10 cups of vegetables, you may find that you start getting a salt craving. So you definitely need the balance of salt with potassium as well. If your adrenals are burnt out, you're gonna need a little bit more salt. If you drink too much water, you will dilute the body's electrolytes, specifically sodium chloride. Now there's a condition called hyponatremia, which is low sodium in your blood, which usually comes from just drinking like gallons of water. So you wanna drink enough, but just realize if you drink too much, you're gonna deplete your sodium and even chlorides as well. If you're doing some type of an endurance exercise, uh, running, marathon, triathlon, things like that, you definitely need a lot more salt. Now, a football player in practice in the summer could sweat out about six teaspoons of salt. 
in that one workout. So the salt that you need is really dependent on your activity level and how much you sweat. Anyway, I wanted to talk about the importance of salt for the immune system, as well as preventing the keto flu. And I always recommend when you're taking salt, do a sea salt. Himalayan uh, sea salt is one of my favorites. Thanks for watching.